Let's kick on without further ado. We'll start with the, with the festival open of the Supreme Novices Hurdle. Um, Q card dominates the ratings. We'll get the time form view on Q card in a moment. Obviously, Paul Nichols is with us. Alfaroff finished second to Q card in the in the champion bumper. Only a madman would reoppose him. So presumably, Alfaroff won't run in the Supreme Novice. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're mad anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, eight lengths um, with eight flights of hurdles in front of you can have a completely different result. And while I think Q card is obviously one of the naps of the, the week. Alfroff has just kept on improving and um, he's very much in the mould of Nolan who won the race a few years ago. He's national hunt bred, stays further. Um, and how many times have we seen a red hot favourite on the first day in the first race get beat? Um, saying that I do think cue cards going to be hard to beat but you know I don't think he wants to go two and a half yet this horse. Although he's bred to stay he's very free and I think he's two miles is the trip at the moment. So Al Feroff will take his chance. In terms of the time form rating, Kieran, of Q-Card, how much does he have in hand of his opponents, do you think? Um, it's very, very rare for a novice at this stage to have achieved the sort of level that, that Q-Card has. Um, he's upwards of a stone clear of his rivals. Some would say that's because he's had the opportunity to run in, in open company. Obviously, he ran up against the likes of Menorah last time, and that's where he got his rating from. However, he, he also was extremely impressive on his hurdling win at Cheltenham. Um, we had a similar scenario with Dungwib last year, but we certainly weren't as firmly behind Dungwib as we are behind Card in terms of his past performance. Yet at the same stage, when we sat here a few days before the festival, Dungwib was a much shorter price than Card is now. Presumably that's because he's British trained, um, relatively unfashionable connections. And certainly my point of view as a punter, that's the one concern. Joe Tizard, the pressure is on him. Big favourite, first race of the festival. And we've seen time and again this winter that Tizard off a horse is often a big positive. Don't beat about the bush. Are you able to quantify that in, in, uh, time, I'll give you a very good in time form terms? I'll give you a very, very good example, Sean. There's a horse called Duriana who ran on Sunday and had previously run three times under Joe. Daryl Jacob got him on him, on her I should say, on Sunday, improved her form by upwards of a stone and her jumping was a completely different scenario. There's more if you want them, but that's okay. a very good example if you watch the video. Okay. He'd, he'd have won the bumper by distance then with someone else. Anyway, uh, let's move on because the threat to Q-Card might come from, particularly from Nicky Henderson, who's well represented with two French bred horses, um, Spirit Sun and Sprinter Sacra. Anthony, did, did you buy those? Did you have a look at those in France? Yep. I um, <coughs> was involved in a deal on Spirit Sun and my partner, David Minton, was, uh, got Spirit Sprinter Sacra as a youngster for, for the moulds. And that would be Caroline Moulds, the wife yeah. of Raymond Moulds, who you'd probably know their colours a bit more with the green and white stars. It's Barry Garrity's biggest problem that he has coming up for next choosing. week, choosing which one he's going to ride. His heart says uh, Sprinter Sacre is the horse. Barry wants to ride Sprinter Sacre, I know that. But the train is telling him that next Tuesday he should be on Spirit Sun. It'll be interesting to see what happens because they've got AP McCoy waiting in the wings, so whichever you choose, I wouldn't be too worried if you've got a top jockey on either. Mm. Both of them work very well this week. They worked on the Founding Road on Tuesday. And Nicky couldn't help but say that he thought that he'd never seen a fast piece of work with Spirit Sun on the Farrington Road. So it, Q Card is very good. And I have been tipping Q Card until I heard about that piece of work on Tuesday. And now I'm starting to sway the other way that Spirit Sun might be better than I... I didn't think he was as good as that, but he was impressive in heavy ground at Exeter. Better ground on Tuesday might catch him out. But the Farrington Road gallop's a pretty good gallop and it would have been on decent ground, and he was very impressive. Your man who won the Scoop 6 the other day, he's got a million pounds to burn. He could buy either He didn't one sound very them. interested in buying a racehorse. But if he Pittman came to asked. you and he said, Anthony, give me a true steer here. Should I buy Spirit Sun or should I buy Sprinter Sacre? Oh, I think I'd buy Sprinter Sacre because I think the long term... As a chaser. Keep Sprinter Sacre in mind. They think he's the potential of a long run in the future. I mean, he, he looks is, a chaser. He Can is he the most over beautiful looking race horse. Like this? Hmm? Could he win a race like this no, on, I think he's on in, the way? I, I, look, he had, a, he had a couple of bumpers and he's had three, uh, three hurdle runs, but he's more inexperienced, seemingly, mentally, than Spirit Sun. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I've got a take on this because uh, Sprinter Sacra and also um, 
the other horse, Spirit Son, have beaten two of mine. Yeah, you've raced against both, yeah. Blur and also Poliski. Yeah. Well, when uh, um, Spirit Son beat Cedra Blur, giving him a stone at extra, I was absolutely blown away. And I said, that will win at Cheltenham. Because yeah. Cedra Blur had hosed in the time before it, uh, Newbury. The form against Poliski is nowhere near right. as good as it was with Cedra Blur. Poliski was nowhere near even ready that day. Sprinter Sacker had been beat at Ascot before. Um, he is a good horse. I think Spirit Sun is different class on what I know against my two. Okay. The interesting, thing would, mm. the interesting thing would be is Ruby persuaded me to run Sam Winner in this race because Sam Winner is a different class to Cedra Blue and Poliski at the moment. What about, well, what's the latest on Sam yeah. Winner? Because I mean, what know, he could be interesting. What do you think? If he gets eight pound off those other horses, the, the, the thing that's swaying me a fraction is the fact the ground on the first day might be on the slow side. Yeah. And if the forecast is, as they say, and it's fast on Friday, I'm in a bit of trouble. So I've got a serious bit of thinking. It'd be interesting to know what yeah. our thoughts are of Sam Winner running that. Get well, eight pound off of those it'd horses. Be, it'd be I, second top on our rate. Well, it'd, be, it'd uh, only have cue cards. How is he? Though, how, more yeah. importantly, how is he after? He's in really good order. Is he back? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I, I shouldn't have run him at Chepstow when I did uh, Christmas. But, you know, he's a national hunt horse, not a flat horse. And national hunt horses don't win the triumph yeah. unless there's cut in the ground. So I, I'm just got a, I've got a lot of thinking to do over the weekend. It'd okay. be interesting, I think. I, what do you Sam think, Winner was my tip in the triumph, so I'd be worried. if I think he won't win the Supreme, necessarily. I'm not sure the four-year-olds are up to beating the older horses, even with the eight. And, I, and it was interesting, we've well, heard today that Marsh Wall... They've done it they have a decent record, actually. Yeah, but I think, this year, I think the Supreme's a strong race, and, I th and the triumph is, is a wide-open race. I okay, so you're saying Sprint of Sacra for the long term. Paul, Spirit you're saying Sun. Spirit Sun's Sorry. form is probably better. Yeah. We can hear from Nicky Henderson talking, he's opened there a couple of weeks ago, about Spirit Sun. Spirit Sun, he's done nothing wrong. He only had one run in France. In fairness, just to cut a long story, he actually had two runs in France. He ran in the same race twice. But it looks as if he only had one run, which he won, which was quite a good hurdle race at Otoy. And then he came over, we went to Huntingdon, and he won very easily. Then Exeter, where I did think he was very impressive. Um, he's just a thoroughly professional, likeable, uncomplicated well he is really isn't he yeah. he's just a very sweet horse and he's just done nothing wrong done nothing wrong we'll try not to say that too many times this evening um, anyone who's sold the time of the first expletive is doing their nut at the moment so let's put that right um, Couch what's your approach to this are you, you going to get this favourite beaten or I'm is it a banker I'm mortified already I've, I've had on the same winner for the triumph now you're going to change <laughs> <racing>. <laughs> And, and the coach is Joe Tizard's number one fan. So oh. uh, we, we had a few laughs with Joe over the years, didn't we? But uh, seriously about cue card, anyone wants to go three rounds of a combine harvest, they can't be all there, can they? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing we've had, Dungwib you know, beaten last year, Cousin Vinny, the last horse to win the bumper and then go and win the Supreme Novices was Montelado, going back many moons, Pat Flynn. Um, it seems every year it turns up. I didn't like the fact it had three quick runs and it hasn't run for a long time. I just wonder, when, when I see it at Cheltenham, I just thought it was a bit of a gangly type, you know, maybe wanted a bit of time in, you know, Colin says I'll give, they'll give it three quick runs. We haven't seen it for a long time. And I didn't like the way watching the video, it wobbled up the hill slightly. Uh, not that I've ever run up an hill quickly, so. <laughs> I feel a bit sorry for the horse <laughs> coming up here, though. <laughs> but he, seriously, he wobbled a bit and I had this conversation with Kieran last night. The only reason he's got that, Handicap mark in my so far because none of the other novices are running Group 2 company. The likes of the really good trainers like Nicky Anderson, Paul, Woody Munnings don't run their novices in Group 2 company. They keep it to novice company. And uh, maybe that, that run really did sort of <laughs> the horse and he hasn't run since. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Spirit Sun fan. Uh, again, my, when they lump on the Anderson horses, they knew what they had at Huntington. It was absolutely smashed off the boards. Uh, at Exeter, Nicky very rarely runs his horses at Exeter, does he? He doesn't like Exeter, Chepstow, anything where there's stamina laid, and Nicky swerves them like a bad pint. You know, all these horses run at Ludlow, Huntingdon, Chepstow pulls the main, Philip Hobbs, they're these sort of galloping tracks, staying tight, it's what Paul excels with. Nicky Innocent, rarely at Chepstow, and I was amazed when it ran at Exeter. And when I watched the video, I couldn't believe his action. I thought, this horse is not going to go on good ground. But when I checked the, the stats for Polyglot, the sire, they love fast ground, the, the French. The, the horses he produced like fast ground. And I didn't know about the bit of work he's done. I've been told that, again, he's got to ride uh, Spirit Sun because of Michael Buckley, the number of horses he's got in the yard. But Nicky 
fucking himself about losing Sprinter Sacra like he lost Kyber Kim back to Twister down in Gloucestershire. We, we've talked about a number of contenders and we haven't touched on any Irish runners, which is a bit, a bit of a worry. You didn't win the champion bumper last year, Johnny, and, and, and we seem to be skating straight through this race. Have, have, you, have you got a runner? Have you got a contender? Well, like, What's the word? <clears throat> Zaidpour was the big talking horse before um, the last day. Um, I think we probably overreacted to his Royal Bond win when he, he won a very ordinary Royal Bond very well. Um, and then we obviously had to excuse his defeat to first lieutenant um, when he didn't really look the same horse. Um, the last day he didn't do a lot wrong behind Oscar as well, but um, now they're talking that he needs soft ground, but he's by Red Ransom, so I was sort of thinking he'd improve for better ground. The word from, I think, Ruby and the yard is that um, he actually needs soft ground. So, I mean, the, 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 the envisaged improvement next Tuesday, seemingly from the yard, isn't going to happen. Um, he looks, to me, he looks beatable. I think um, Dermot Wells' horse could run well. I think the, the better ground will be a, a bonus for him, Hidden Universe. Dermot Wells is quite positive on him. Um, he, he's, he's inexperienced. I know they say, well, there's a bad record at the festival, but um, I think he's in a, one, of, one of the greatest trainers, I think, that's ever trained. <laughs> I, I, and he'd probably tell you that himself as well. <laughs> yeah. he, he has done many times. Yeah. Um, but no, I, 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 I would be... Uh, Going away from the Irish, I'd be against Q card. I think Menorah left him for dead the last day. So he clearly has limitations. Mm. And I think two miles is one of them. Okay. What about Silvano that day, Paul? You train that. What, 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 what was your take on that race? Um, we, with um, Q card, with Silvano Conti and Menorah? Well, Silvano Conti that day gave him, gave him all four pounds. You could argue that that's sort of what he's done since he's let the form down. But I think Silvano Conti was in the form of his life then. But at line for his last run. Um, I mean, cue card, if you think Menor's going to win the champion hurdle, and the way cue card ran that day, having had several quick runs, was top class form. Don't worry that he hasn't run since. Tizard's horses weren't right in January, so they've just left him off. I know he did a brilliant bit of work at Wincanton last week, and I actually think, from a trainer's point of view, for them not running him again, having given him three quick runs, is a good thing. I do, I, I do think it'd be hard to beat. OK, we started, Paul, this section asking about Al Ferroff. Yeah. But we now have Sam Winner well, maybe in the frame. When, oh. when, when, when will you have to make a decision? 10 o'clock Monday morning. Yeah. Give um, us a ring at 9.58 so I can yeah. trade out. <laughs> 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 That's quite interesting. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> do us a favour. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that, is, that is the last I need to. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the weather's going to be important. I've got to talk to Ruby. It says here now, So Young's definitely running in the Neptune. Um, and Zaidpour's going to run in the other race. And Ruby will, it said to me this morning, if he eventually gets off the fence, that he's going to ride, he will ride Sam Winner if he runs in this race. Oh. So he's obviously quite keen. So that would have a big bearing on the race. But, um, I mean, I've got two other bullets to run in the Triumph, which we'll go on to later on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the ground oh. is my issue with Sam Winner. If it, got very, it looked like being quick on the, on the, on the Friday. So, you well, know, we'll just see. Get in. I've been, I've been I mean, back I'll the other two. Sorry? I've been back the other two. Well, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> 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 okay, final word on this. If, if it sounds what, what you're saying, if, if Sam goes, you, you'd certainly favour him over Al Ferroff. He's a better horse, isn't he? Uh, Al you wouldn't know how he's got unlimited potential. I just wouldn't. He's just, I think he'd be better next year jumping fences than he yeah. probably will over hurdles. But, you know, I thought that about Nolan and he, he won the race. So, um, you know, there's not, uh, this, on ratings, Sam Winner is a better horse. Okay. On ratings. Kieran, yeah. time form line on this. Um, time form line is that sum up. Q card stands out on ratings, but there's a concern for me about the, the jockey enough to put me off at take a lump in on it two to one again, and therefore Sam Winner would be <laughs> a fascinating contender. Just have a look at these prices here. Sprinter Sacra, double figures. Spirit Sun is shortening up uh, by the look of things over the last 24 hours. Couch wants a little break now so we can go and trade off and get Sam Winner at 33s, <laughs> which is currently trading properly. Trouble with doing I've these things. Him to it. <laughs> I've just seen Kelvin disappearing out the back of the old tour. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Anthony, would your vote go for Spirit Sun? <laughs> I think I'll go with Spirit Sun. I, just quickly, I know we're yeah. going to drag on. I saw a photograph of Q Card last week when he was in the, I don't know if you saw it in the Racing Post, when he was with a bunch of cattle. Right. That was in the summer. Yeah, exactly. And I actually, on one of my previews on Monday Night in Ireland, said this is a negative. I said, if that horse looks like that now... Okay. I would not be wanting to back that horse because he's galloped at the race course since. Right. And then the Racing Post you won't be invited contacted back me the next day and said, oh, you said that, but that was an archived photograph. <laughs> it was just a point to throw out there because I used yeah. it as a negative and yeah. then they told me the next day that was a September photograph or a summer photograph. Six months old, forget yeah. about it. So oh, he oh. doesn't look, well, he might be lean, but he didn't look as lean as that.